Hello and welcome back. In this video we are going to discuss Cook's distance or Cook's d and this is a measure which tells us which, inf which observations are to be considered influential for the estimate and that builds on what we did in the previous section, namely we have the information how much does the estimate change when we remove one observation for each observation. And all we need to do now is to add a proper scale to it that we know whether the change we got is significantly large or whether it's negligibly small. So let's see what we can do here. So let us start by recalling what we did in the last video with a numerical example. I'm going to fit the stack loss data set again and looking at how do the regression coefficients change when I leave out individual observations. That can be done in R using the function influence and that tells you the diagonal elements of the hat matrix which are used in this calculation but then it also tells you what we are interested in here. This is in the coefficients section and that tells for each observation how do the coefficients change if I remove that observation. So if I remove observation 1, the intercept goes down by nearly 1, the airflow changes by 5 times 10 to the 2, water temperature by 0 0.03, the coefficient for acid concentration by minus 0 0.03 and so on. Now that's a lot of numbers so that makes interpretation a bit difficult. And the aim of our section here is to get a sense of scale to first reduce this to a bit fewer numbers and then to say which of these changes are large and which of these changes are small. So for example here we see there is a minus 5 that's much larger than the minus 1 but of course the other coefficients have also changed. So maybe that's an observation which if we remove it changes the estimate a lot or maybe not. So that's what we are considering here. So first we can remember we have already had a section where we compared beta values and that was when we considered confidence intervals, confidence regions for the parameter vector or hypothesis tests for the parameter vector. And there if you think back, well there we had this matrix k to select coefficients we had k beta hat minus k beta, this distance. And the way we did it there is we argued that is the wrong distance. So what we should do instead is we should use a specially crafted distance for that situation, which uses the matrix K X transpose X inverse K transpose as a covariance matrix. And the definition was the square of that norm equals, well, vector transpose. Then this matrix inverse, so K X transpose X inverse K transpose and then that thing inverse and then the vector again. And that's the measure we use then. We divide that by P plus 1 times sigma head squared and we will do that again. But here we should think what is K? And K at the time we used as a matrix which had mostly zeros and a few ones to select which coefficients are we looking at. And here we are looking at all regression coefficients at once. So we use k is identity so that k beta is beta. In this case, the distance between beta hat and beta is, well, the k is not there, it's identity. So we have the x transpose x inverse distance. And you see that comes out quite nicely with the k is not there. We have x transpose x inverse and then the inverse again. So that slightly annoying inverse here is gun. So we have beta hat minus beta transpose, x transpose x, beta hat minus beta. Good. So that, when we considered confidence regions and hypothesis tests, was a reasonable way to say how far are two beta values apart. And for the analysis there, what we needed to do is we needed to divide that by, I said it already, p plus 1 times sigma hat squared. And if we do that, then our old results say that thing is F distributed with P plus 1 and N minus P minus 1 degrees of freedom. And the reason we did this dividing, where the P plus 1 is just to get the F distribution, so it doesn't really matter so much, but the sigma head squared here is so that the distribution of this thing does no longer depend on the unknown sigma or sigma squared, which was a good property for the tests and confidence intervals. 
Good, and Cook's distance just reuses that result. So if that was a good way of measuring distances in the past, we can use that again. So Cook's distance is traditionally called capital DI, and it's defined as beta hat i minus beta hat measured in this norm, x transpose x inverse divided by p plus 1 sigma hat squared. And now this will no longer be f distributed or not automatically because, well, we have no beta here, we have beta hat i here, so now we are comparing two estimates. But still, the f distribution was a reasonable scale here. So presumably these distances should still be measured on a scale where values which are reasonable for the f distribution are reasonable values. And if you check quantiles of the s distribution, or could for example say the median, the value where half of the s distribution is above and half of it is below. And if you check values for different p and n, these minions are not too far away from one. So traditionally, some authors at least would say that observation i is influential if and only if di is bigger than one. So one would think that is an observation which is important for computing the estimate, so one runs extra checking. Okay, so let us look at a quick numerical example. There is a second R function relating to influence called influence measures, and that, amongst other things, shows Cook's d values. They're in this column. Most of them, well, all of them are smaller than one, and most of them are, well, so first we see all of them are smaller than one. Let us just do a scatter plot so that we get a better sense of scale. Good, here we have found the information. So we do plot i dollar inf mat and then the row, which I don't know. Can I write cook dot d here? I think I can. Good, so here's the scatter plot. So these are cook's d values for all observations. And what we see here is, well, first, clearly all of them are smaller than the cutoff at 1. We already knew that. But we also see the last one is much larger than the others, and it's 0.7, which is at least approaching 1. So it would probably be worth having a look at the last observation. I wonder if we just look at the data, maybe we can spot what's going on. So from these numbers, it's not entirely clear to me. Let me see, maybe if we do pairs, stack loss, and let's leave out the response. So we just do the three column. Ah, then we cannot see which one is the last one, so we introduce some color. And now we can just make it out. It's here and here and here and here and here and here. So I would not call that an outlier. It seems to be kind of in the middle of the field. So maybe it's a problem with the response. Let's do plot. Is it M, for example? Ah, I think we spoke about that in a previous video. That is the one where the residual is far out and is the most negative residual. I think that probably means the Y value here is funny. One would need to know more about the data to assess whether that indicates the problem or not. Good. But that's what we have here. And just going back to the R output, I'm not going to explain all of it here, but we can go through some of them. So Cook's d-value is this column. And in the formula, in the notes, I have two extra formulas how to compute this on top of what I just showed you to you. So you should have a look that is probably computed using the third formula I have in the notes. Then here are the diagonal elements of the hat matrix. Again, we had them already earlier when we just used the command influence. So hat matrix is 0 0.30, 0 0.31, 0 0.17. That is here, 0 0.30, 0 0.31, and 0 0.17. Then these columns here are the change in beta. I think it's rescaled somehow. Is that true? Yes. Originally, the intercept for the first one changed by minus 1, and here changes in some other way. So these are rescaled in some way. I'm not quite sure how that is at the moment. And here are some other measures, and we are not going to discuss these, but this star indicates if an observation is marked as influential by any of the criteria they have here. 
And the last one we picked out ourselves. I don't think that is marked as influential by this because I assume there will also be using cut of one, so it will be one of the columns we have not discussed. But still look out for stars that marks influential observations in the mind of that function. Good, so that finishes our discussion of Cook's D and also our discussion about the influence of individual observations in an estimate. So bye bye and see you soon.